All right, we're going to be going through concept two of our genetics unit, which is on protein synthesis. And I want to emphasize this is a completely independent process from DNA replication, which we learned in concept one. So this is happening completely independently. This is the process, though, of reading the instructions on that DNA to make a protein from it. So the central dogma of genetics, kind of the big idea, is that DNA is the instructions, and it's in the nucleus, and it can't leave the nucleus. But proteins are made in the ribosomes. So we have to have a way of getting from the instructions to where they're actually made. It'd be like making, a, like, you know, you're baking a cake in your kitchen, but the recipe book is in a different building. So we have to figure out some way to, you know, move that information. And so that's why protein synthesis takes two steps. DNA is going to go into RNA, or be copied into RNA, I should say, and that RNA then will be translated into a protein. This right here, right down here, this is the central dogma. Now we can add a little bit more detail to it. The process of going from DNA to RNA is called transcription, and the process of going from RNA to protein is called translation. Transcription and translation are the two steps of protein synthesis, so we're going to talk through each one now. But before we do that, there's actually three types of RNA that are going to be really critical um, for understanding these processes. So first is messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. When we were talking in concept one about the structure of RNA, this is really what we were talking about. We were really thinking about mRNA in terms of it being a single strand with exposed bases. But what mRNA's purpose is, is it is the copy of instructions in DNA. So it's the thing that gets the copy, and it's going to go into the nucleus, get the copy of DNA, leave the nucleus, and carry these instructions to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Now, tRNA is the transfer RNA. What it's going to do, it's going to carry or transfer amino acids, that's what this is up here, to the ribosome um, and the mRNA that's in the ribosome. So mRNA is the instructions. It's going to go to the ribosome. Based on what it says, tRNA is going to bring the amino acids that are going to be used to assemble the protein. Because remember, amino acids are the monomer of proteins. RRNA stands for ribosomal RNA. This is just a picture of ribosomes because there's really, I mean, you can't really show what ribosomal RNA is because it just makes up ribosomes. Ribosomes are made of protein and rRNA. Um, this is the stuff, though, we mentioned in cells that the nucleolus that's inside the nucleus makes. So the nucleolus makes this rRNA, and this just makes up ribosomes. So all three, three of these are going to be important for understanding protein synthesis. All right, the first step is transcription. And think, transcript is a, a transcript is a copy of your grades. So when you go to the guidance counselor and you want your grades, they give you a transcript, so it's just a copy. So this is going to be making a copy of those instructions. So think, if my recipe book for my cake is at my grandma's house, I would go to her house, I would make a copy of the recipe, I wouldn't take the whole book, i just make a copy, and then I could leave the house with a copy of that instructions and go to my house and actually make the cake. So that's what transcription is. We're going to go, make a copy of the instructions, and then we're going to leave and make the protein somewhere else. So the purpose is to carry the code or carry the instructions out of the nucleus. Because remember, DNA doesn't leave the nucleus and proteins are made in, the, in ribosomes, which are in the cytoplasm. This is going to happen in the nucleus because that's where DNA is. We're going to start with DNA and we're going to end with a copy of that DNA in the form of mRNA. Now, here's what happens. Unzip the gene that needs to be copied. So notice, this is different from replication in that we're not unzipping all of the DNA. We're only going to unzip part of it, whichever part we need to copy. So just a section of it, just the gene that we're going to copy. Then we're going to use complementary base pairing rules for RNA. So we're going to match RNA nucleotides to the exposed DNA nucleotides. So the only difference is that there's uracil instead of thymine. So if you look down here, this bottom row is DNA. This new row is RNA. So wherever I have an A on the DNA, now I'm going to match it with a U on the RNA. Gs still go with Cs. Ts will still go with As. It's just the A's that now go with U's, C's go with G's, etc. Once it's done, it will release the completed mRNA molecule. So this red messenger mark molecule can leave. And then the DNA just zips back up, and the mRNA is able to leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm. 
So in summary, DNA is copied into a complementary strand of mRNA. So we've got our DNA. It's going to unzip, and we're going to make the mRNA from it. Then the DNA is going to zip back up, and we're going to have a separate mRNA strand. So DNA, there's my DNA unzipped. There's my mRNA that gets copied from one side of the DNA. And the DNA zips back up, and we have the mRNA that's all by itself. All right, let's actually try what this means like in terms of a practice problem. So I may give you a template strand of DNA, so just one side of a DNA molecule. You would have to tell me the mRNA sequence. So based on RNA base pairing rules, what would go with this DNA? So for that T, we would have an A, and then A's go with U, C's go with G's, G's go with C, etc. So that's what you'd be doing. Notice there's no T's. All right, now that's the first step of protein synthesis. Now we're going to talk about translation, which is the second step, where we're actually going to make a protein. But before we do that, we need to understand a little bit of vocabulary. So first, is we a genetic code is just a code of instructions for how to make proteins. A codon is a set of three nucleotides on the mRNA. So we have our mRNA molecule, our messenger RNA. We're going to read it in threes. So every three nucleotides, we're going to read it. And so every three nucleotides is a codon. On the tRNA molecule, there's an anticodon. So this is the complementary three nucleotides on the tRNA. So for instance, if, you know, this says UCA on the, as a codon, the, comp, the anticodon is AGU. So it's the complement of those. And we'll talk about why that's useful later. And then last, on the other end of the tRNA, so there's an anticodon on one end, is an amino acid. So the amino acid is the monomer or the building block for making proteins. And we're going to bond amino acids together using peptide bonds. So this kind of just is a way of like proofreading and making sure we're dropping off the right amino acid based on whatever the mRNA says. All right, so purpose is to read or follow the instructions on the mRNA to make a protein. This is going to happen in the cytoplasm, specifically in ribosomes, whether they're floating in the cytoplasm or on the rough ER. We're going to start with mRNA, and we're going to end with a completed protein. So here are the steps. First, the mRNA is going to attach to the ribosome. The ribosome is going to read the mRNA codons, which remember a codon is three nucleotides. It's like a triplet. So we're going to read three letters at a time. The tRNA is going to act like taxis, and they're going to pick up and drop off amino acids that match with whatever the codon that's currently being read says. So what they'll do is they'll read what the codon says, and then they'll drop off whichever amino acid it codes for. The ribosome will bond those amino acids together using peptide bonds. It's going to keep going until it gets to a stop codon, and then it will release the completed protein. It will literally say stop. That's how it will know when to end. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's just interpreting the RNA to make a protein. So we've got the mRNA down here. We see the tRNA. The anticodons are matching up with the codons, and they're bringing whatever amino acid that the codons code for. And then peptide bonds would be forming between these black amino acids. This is the genetic code. So this is how you will be able to look up whatever amino acid needs to be dropped off. So like looking back here, the codon right here is AUG. So that's the codon. I want to know, okay, what amino acid would be being dropped off. If I look at this genetic code, I start from the middle and I work my way out. So I have A and then U and then G. That is a methionine. That would be the amino acid that would be dropped off. And what you're going to see is that AUG is always the first codon. We're always going to start reading at AUG. And so this is methionine. It's always going to be where my first amino acid dropped off. All right, then this mRNA says UCA. So if I go over here, UCA, that's serine. So serine will be the next amino acid that's dropped off. All right. Then we have ACU, ACU, that's threonine, threonine will be dropped off. And then we have UGA, UGA, it literally says stop, so that's where you know to end. Okay, so you're gonna, we're going to practice using the, reading this genetic code. All right, 
Now we're going to try transcription and translation as two steps all together. So again, I would start off by giving you a DNA sequence. First, if you're transcribing, you're going to tell me the mRNA. So you're going to use your complementary base pairing rules. Then you're going to split this in threes into codons because we're going to read it in threes. You're going to start splitting in threes where you see AUG. So this one's nice and easy because AUG is at the beginning. So we're going to split it in threes. You can just put a line down the middle or separate them out like this. Then I'm going to look up each of these on my genetic code. So if you look up AUG, you get a methionine. CGA, you get arginine. UCA, you get serine. UGC, you get cysteine. And UAA, you get stop. If you do it right, you should always begin with met and end with stop. All right, well, we're going to practice this a ton, a ton, a ton, so don't worry. But also, I suggest that if you have my PowerPoint, you go to the end, look in the notes section. There's some animations that will really help you visualize this process in action. If you don't have my notes, I suggest you just Google some protein synthesis animations just so you can kind of see what this really looks like.